Welcome to Needham School Spotlight. I'm Dan Goody Kant, Superintendent of Schools. The Needham School Committee has an ambitious and busy agenda ahead of them this year. Joining me today to talk about that agenda are three school committee members. I want to welcome Chair Michael Grice, Vice Chair Connie Barr, and School Committee member Sue Neckes. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you for having us. Um, first of all, I wanted to mention that the uh, performance report is out and uh, we're, we're hoping the community members get a chance to spend some time reading it and uh, uh, considering it and, and thinking about uh, the performance of the Needham schools. Um, very pleased. In fact, some of the things that we're going to talk about this morning are, are embedded in the report as opportunities and challenges. Um, so thanks to the, the uh, folks who put this together. Uh, Michael, why don't we begin with you and talk about some of those challenges and opportunities ahead that the Needham School Committee is going to consider. I'd be glad to do that. When, you know, we start, first of all, on, on top of already an ambitious agenda of all the work that the staff does in the schools every day, of the work that you and your team do to advance the goals of the system. But um, we're looking at four things that are very important for this year that we want to see move forward significantly. Uh, and not in a particular order, but the first is the uh, Hillside Feasibility Study, which is going to be under, getting underway. And we, it is our goal that we come to a community consensus on a preferred option for uh, rebuilding Hillside and get that approved by the MSBA, uh, we hope, by the end of the school year. Um, also in the kind of infrastructure line is uh, here at the high school, where we have not only uh, an unprecedentedly large population of over 1,600. We see that population of 16 to 1,700 continuing for as far as we can see. And the building does need some work in terms of the cafeteria. We're hoping to add some classrooms. We have a pretty big job ahead of us in the course of this year of communicating that and uh, making sure that the community, town meeting, and the boards uh, we work with understand that and are able to prioritize that with us. So we hope to have that work done over the course of this year so that May Town Meeting, we can perhaps request the support for that. Um, then uh, a third very important project is a technology-related project, and that is the iPad. Um, roll out the sixth grade and it's more than just the first year of the iPad but preparing ourselves for years two and three as the students bring those to seventh and eighth grade and then beyond. And then fourth, and this is a little further out, this is a community that we are determined to move from half-day kindergarten to full-day kindergarten. It's been something that's been on our agenda for a very long time. We now have a, a, at least a sort of maybe a distant but not so distant point at which once we finish our building project we know we will have the room for that um, so we want to begin preparing now we're putting together a kindergarten planning committee study committee to look at how we get from here to there so those are four things that by the end of this year the school year we hope have made some significant progress over and above everything else that you and everyone in the schools has to do well it, it, it there's a lot right there and there's much more that happens behind the scenes with the school committee and um, I mean it's probably appropriate just for a moment to share what you know the school committee what most of the public sees is a meeting on on uh, cable every other Tuesday approximately but there's a lot more that goes into it what, what are some of the other projects and, and, and programs that are going on with with the school committee well I can start with just saying that uh, I first work on a few different subcommittees I work with our FinCom liaisons on the budget. Michael also does that. Uh, I've worked on the iPad uh, launch and rollout. And uh, this year I'm going to be working with the PPBC on looking at the Hillside Feasibility Study. Um, and everybody on the school committee is involved in additional committees outside of what you see on our Tuesday night meetings. Well, and Connie, you just concluded uh, along, with, uh, along with Michael and uh, some negotiations, so another role that you have on the committee very important role to work with our teachers in negotiating the con and our administrators in negotiating their contracts and in the other excellent and wonderful staff we have in the Dean Public Schools and we do that um, through a contract year every three years um, for each of our units so-called of staff in the Dean Public Schools. Well I, I think I think some folks might believe that well you know they show up for a meeting and then the meeting ends and, <laughs> and everything uh, kind of uh, uh, goes quiet for a while, um, but that's really not the case. The, the, the Needham School Committee is very invested, very involved, and committed uh, to providing leadership and support and guidance to the school administrators and, and teachers so that we can uh, support Needham's children, which is our, our, joint, uh, our joint goal. Um, so, Michael, you mentioned, you know, four ambitious activities, and again, there are others that we can touch upon this morning, but I wanted to maybe jump into um, uh, one of them, maybe beginning uh, with, uh, with with the kiddos in mind and, and kindergarten, uh, maybe starting there a little bit. So, 
So Connie, what, what's the What's the long-term plan for kindergarten? I mean, Needham does not have full-day kindergarten. We are one of the few communities around us. I believe uh, Medfield, um, I'll lose track of the others, do not have full-day kindergarten. And of course, Wellesley just passed an override to support full-day kindergarten. Uh, what's, what's the story with uh, full-day kindergarten? We'd really like to offer an academic school day in full-day kindergarten. Many advantages to doing that. So now that we're looking forward to these building projects, we have the opportunity to think about it. And we would like to study it carefully um, with teachers and uh, school committee members and community members to look at what that would look like. Well, and of course the CASE program, the Kindergarten After School Enrichment Program, is, is a brilliantly conceived program. It's well executed and, and families really enjoy it and appreciate it. Uh, and and uh, it's something that complements our half-day program, but it really doesn't replace it. And there has been, since I started nine years ago as superintendent, every year there are questions, well, why isn't there full-day kindergarten? It does come back to the space issue, and we, we, need, to, we need to talk about that. It certainly is not the will of, of, uh, of the community not to do it. I mean, I, I imagine you all hear frequently that we do. folks are We'd looking like for, see, for kindergarten. Right. Yeah, I think it's been on the list. I, I've been on the school committee for 10 years, and it was on the school committee's agenda before I joined the school committee. Uh, it really it morphed into a space issue as we grew. Um, it was perhaps 10, 15 years ago. There was a question of how do we fund it, but within the last you know eight to ten years, it was clear that we did not have room because of the growth in population in the district and all the buildings. And that's true today. There's several buildings that by themselves could host a full day kindergarten, but there's others that can't. And so one of the issues the committee was going to have to look at is how do we get from here to there? Do we do a pilot? Do you do a phased approach? You might be able Some to. Some do a lottery. Right. Uh, but then, you know, there's a matter of equity and concern. Yep, sure. But the community may feel that if they know they're going to get there, that it would be okay to, to perhaps have a phased approach. And that's part of what we have to look at. Uh, the committee has to look at to determine if, if we think we have a target date, maybe a few years in advance, we start, uh, we start moving there. Because we also have to be very confident that the entire community supports us. We know a lot of young parents will say, I can't believe you don't do this. But there are others whose children went through the schools and had half the kindergarten. So they need, you know, we need to be able to explain very clearly and cogently the benefits of full day kindergarten so the rest of the community is willing to support that. I mean, the studies show that it is beneficial right. to our children. We know there are some reasons that parents might prefer a half day mm -hmm. more time at home, more playtime, more unstructured time. But the studies really show that children do better with their peers, they work better independently. They are academically ahead for some period of time. And actually, I think for kindergartners, maybe the academics are, are a start, but not the most important thing. But beginning to develop themselves socially in groups and to work independently is so important. Well, and, and the reality is, you know, around, uh, around us, there are programs growing. St. Joe's has a growing full-day kindergarten mm -hmm. program. And, 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 and frankly, in many ways, it's responsive to the St. Joe's community, but it's also responsive to the broader Needham community for parents who are looking for that opportunity. Well, it, it seems that uh, there, there is a lot of interest and there will be and there is support for a full day program. It's a matter of developing a pathway to, to getting there. Uh, Connie, you and Joe Barnes, will, Barnes will kind yeah. of head up with uh, some staff members, a, a subcommittee to, to explore pathways to full day kindergarten. And uh, this is a great opportunity, excuse me for interrupting, great opportunity to make clear to the community that we'd like to hear what their thoughts are. And we will have a structured way to, to manage that as we go forward. But we will want to hear, as we always do, what the thoughts are, various, are of various community members about that. And it's not a, it's a, not one, a one and done conversation. No. This is something that will we'll, uh, we'll kind of build one Next conversation on the other over the next couple of years. Right. Well, a really, a really important uh, uh, feature of the, of the district goals that you discussed recently and, and something that uh, it, it's kind of the last key piece of the educational program of our students pre-K through 12 that, that needs to be tackled. Um, it, it, bega it began that whole piece with kindergarten really because of the lack of space. Mm -hmm. Michael, you outlined uh, two, two initiatives, two space initiatives that the community is facing and the school committee is discussing and, and wants to, to try to uh, solve. So one is Hillside, and just backing up a little bit, uh, we learned recently that the MSBA is going to partner with us on a feasibility right. study, and we are in the process now working with the Permanent Public Building Committee to procure a project manager, and then shortly after that, an architect to, to begin some design and conversation. So that work is, is beginning. Um, and, and then what are, what are next steps? What, what does, what, how, does, how does kindergarten tie into the Hillside project and, and what is the need there at Hillside? Well, 
when we did the pre-feasibility work for Hillside and Mitchell, the two schools that you know, are still in, in need of renovation and are significantly <laughs> undersized, um, we asked the designers who worked with us to include as one of the priorities for those projects that there be sufficient room in our system, system-wide, for full-day kindergarten. And what that looks like is essentially building a hillside school and eventually you know, rebuilding or uh, renovating a Mitchell school so that all of the schools put together have sufficient space for full day kindergarten because some could do it today and you know like a case classroom if there's a separate classroom that obviously would be available for full day K but in some buildings it wouldn't be um, and I, I think it, it will be extremely important also to think about how we balance the population because we will not get there without some redistricting no matter where the, the buildings end up there will be some redistricting involved but that will be a little bit down so the road. For, just for detour, what do we what do we mean by redistricting? When people hear redistricting, what is that? What, what what does that mean? It means that today my student, my child may go to Mitchell, and you know next year or the year that we have to redistrict, they may end up in a different school, maybe at Broadmeadow. Um, but we have all great elementary schools, and um, I'm really impressed with all the great work that goes on, and they're all phenomenal. They're all great communities. And so I think our parents can be confident that wherever their student or their child ends up, they'll be in a great place. And, and the, uh, that's another reason for starting this process earlier, so that people can think about that, because it's going to take several years at least to get to that point when we're going to be able to have full-day kindergarten. And so, you know, people can start to think about how that works. Um, the idea is to have children have the opportunity to go through school, you know, and then switch. I, I've, you know, I've lived in town, and I've been in Elliott and then Hillside and Elliott. My children went to two of the three schools. Um, so you know, two, two times during that redistricting. So it, it's not the end of the world, but the, the more advanced notice people have, the easier it is to kind of prepare for the fact that, you know, there may be a change. Right, right. Redistricting is a challenge, but it's usually a challenge more for the parents, usually, than for the children, who oh, seem yeah. to adjust very well. very well. Uh, we've been through it in our household, and I'm grateful for our time in both of the schools we were in. Well, and as a parent, I've also gone through it, and, and the, the kids are resilient. They, they, uh, they hold on to friends, or they make new friends, and, and life does go on. So it's, it's a more of an adult, uh, uh, adults Honestly. get uh, a yeah. little concerned. Uh, so Hillside, what the, 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 the long game on Hillside is that we hope, if I understand the, the trajectory of this project, if, if everything can fall in line, a design, a venue that is the right venue for Hillside, preferably where Hillside's located now, but that can be a challenge for many reasons. If it's located somewhere else in town, uh, another decision point. But ultimately, um, going to the community for the funds to support a new school will be a huge school committee initiative in the, in the next year or so. Um, and then construction. So we're not looking at moving into a new hillside until 2019, 2020. 2020. I, I, what we've yeah. said is that we're pretty confident with the trajectory we're on now that by, by fall of 2020, we will be in, in a new school. It's possible it's earlier, but I'd rather people have a, yeah. a more conservative date. And just in backing up in terms of where we are now in the project, uh, the, uh, the project manager selection followed by the designer selection will happen this fall. So what the community should expect is either late this fall or early in the new year will be when the designer starts meeting with the community and meeting with lots of people to, to begin preparing um, the plan. And people should be aware that the, the uh, Mass School Building Authority has been very clear that they really want the educational program to drive the facility, despite what you hear about, well, we're trying to save money, trying to keep the buildings as uniform as possible. They want people to understand that if you start with a solid educational program, they want to build the building that supports that. And I think we've, we've done a lot of work towards that. <laughs> but that's what you'll see as you start to meet with the community, is not only the physical requirements and some of the space challenges we have, but also what is our educational vision? How are, we, how are our schools implemented? That will drive and, the design. And you know, it does seem, you, you say 2020, for example, and you know, here it is, 2014. <coughs> it seems far off, but there's so much. We're in actually a very good place, and, and we're, the, the train is moving. Um, and, and that's positive, but it does take time. Uh, the, the good news is that uh, both Hillside and Mitchell, the town is, is investing, it is invested in maintaining those buildings. Uh, we just opened up four modular classrooms at Mitchell, which are providing a huge yeah, amount of space and breathing room a lot at of Mitchell. Uh, we're, we're pulling kids out of the hallways and into, out of stairwells and into classroom space. That's absolutely appropriate. So the, the town is committed there. The public uh, facilities director and, and his staff are committed to cleaning and maintaining and painting and refreshing and, and keeping the buildings 
you know, alive until we get to this project. Uh, they're still cramped, and there's a there's a huge need at Hillside and, and subsequently at Mitchell, and by the way, down the road at Pollard as well. But the town is is looking for ways to really make sure that the buildings are sustained and 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 they're they're kept open and, and appropriate for for teaching and yeah, learning. And I think the burden really falls it's on the staff and the principals of the school. Uh, you know, the kids, uh, if we do our job right, they love the buildings. In fact, the families, you know, every family uh, that I've ever run to loves their elementary school. You know, whether the building is older or newer, um, but to make that happen. A lot has to happen behind the scenes you know, for Mike Schwinden, Mike Kaskak, and their staffs at the two older schools. So we have the, the Hill, Hillside project is, is, is moving on, on, on course with the community support so far. And, and the other, the other uh, uh, project, uh, space need, is, is regarding the, the, the facility we're in, uh, Needham High School, which the community did a, a great job supporting and ultimately <coughs> designing and, and building when it opened in, in 2005, 2006. Uh, but already, it is crowded. Um, what are, you know, Connie? What are what are some of the things you're hearing about the space needs at the high school and and some of the the uh, concerns? We just plain are running out of space for classrooms because of the burgeoning uh, number of students at the high school, going up to I believe 1,700 in the next uh, several years. And the school was built for 1,450. 50, 50, 50, yes. Designed for 1,450. Designed yeah. for 1,450. So there's classroom space, and our cafeteria has trouble accommodating all of our students. They're eating lunch from early to late in order to accommodate groups of students. Um, there's thoughts about we may need to take over some of the uh, facilities we set up in the high school several years ago when it was renovated in order to have adequate classroom space. One of the things that's always important to remember is it isn't just we have lots of different kinds of class classes. Some need to be smaller, some larger. So we need numbers of classrooms that are larger than just dividing our population right. by 25. Right. We need some small classes for certain subjects. We need small classes for our special uh, education students or for um, different levels of teaching. So we really need to um, currently try to find spaces everywhere for the number of classes that I, are needed. I think that one of the challenges that Dr. Pizzi has described is that we have, and, and for, for folks to understand, there are core spaces that have to be right-sized, cafeterias, bathrooms, hallways, gymnasiums, auditoriums, and then their classrooms. We're being squeezed in both fronts at, at Needham High School. Um, the, the, you know, the auditorium, for example, is the original uh, auditorium, and it only seats a few hundred students. You can't even have in the incoming freshman class next year. You could not have them meet in there together as a class. Uh, gym space is, uh, is not actually adequate to meet our, our existing program, and the cafeteria uh, requires a, a uh, thinking very strategically about how you get your lunch and then where you can sit. Uh, even opening the campus to juniors and seniors so they can have lunch off campus still provides challenges for the underclassmen uh, to, to have lunch. And on a rainy or a cold day, it's, it's a different uh, calculus altogether about how you're going to eat and, and where you're going to go. But classrooms are a space. Classrooms are, are, classrooms are a challenge and getting right. kids from place to place. And, and, well, Dr. Pizzi has already done some work in converting spaces creatively. <laughs> There'll be some work this year in taking a uh, moving equipment that's in a language lab onto a cart and right. then splitting that into two classrooms. So there's a lot of work that he has done as the population has increased from the 1450 that it was at to 16 something, 1600 something today. Um, but I think one of the challenges and that we have to communicate to, to the community is you can go into an elementary school and you can see a lot of kids in a classroom and not a lot of space to store things. It's very obvious. It's harder in a high school because the challenge is how do you schedule all the kids so they can have the lunch and get to all the classes that they need and want to complete their education and move on to college or whatever they're going to do beyond. So it's not simply a question of bodies and classrooms. You need the space and the staff to be able to schedule all of those classes um, so that you know students can't say, well, I can't take AP Bio, I can't take this class. And you know it's something I really need for what I want to do going forward. That's a little harder. It's not is visible. So that's part of our challenge this year is to communicate um, the urgency and the importance of some additional classroom space to the community. And, and also, there's already been a lot of work done to accommodate the students as the population is increasing. And we're, he is starting out, we're starting to run out of options for well, I, I, programming. I, just on that point, he, I know that he's converted some closets into small classroom space already in this building. And I mean, what, stepping back, because if I'm a community member in Needham and we open, we're doing all this building,